This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's SmackDown time. They're too big and heavy to hold, one in each hand, so you'll see them in a minute. This is the Surface Book 2 15-inch versus the 15-inch razor blade, which is new for 2018, a new design. Now, several of you have asked for this SmackDown, and in some ways I was a little mystified, but at the same time, it makes some sense. I mean, I myself could see trying to decide between these two, despite the fact they're so different. What they do have in common, obviously, is their 15-inch laptops. They have boutique designs, shall we say. This is about as nice as it gets, unibody metal designs, attention to detail, everything nicely put together and polished. Yeah, it's for you MacBook Pro defectors, for anybody who wants to really feel good about their purchase and like they paid for something that is worth it in terms of cosmetics anyway. Beyond that, they have NVIDIA GTX 1060 or higher graphics cards, so they're for you sometimes gamers, given the fact that these are both essentially still thin and light, ultra booky size products. Obviously not the best choice for your main gaming rig if you're a hardcore first person shooter player kind of person, but for gaming on the go, they're very good at that. They both have Intel 8th generation CPUs, but quite a difference in the kind of CPU. That's going to be one of the big important points that we'll talk about. They both have really lovely displays. With this Surface Book 2, you're only getting one display option, which is nearly 4K. And with the Razer Blade, you have a full HD display that's quite nice. It's the one that we have, and there's a 4K touchscreen option there as well. Lastly, they both have strong battery life for something in this category, which means the performance you can actually gain with the category. We're going to talk about the rest of it now. So now that we've covered the fundamental overlap, there is plenty of important differences between these two. Obviously, first and foremost, the Surface Book 2 is a convertible. You're paying for that. Other than the luxury, the build, you like Microsoft, that sort of thing, there's not much reason to pay $2,500 price of entry for this product. You're paying for the fact that it works like a laptop, but at the same time, you can detach the screen and use it as a tablet which is pretty darn nifty, especially with, for something that has this much graphics horsepower, particularly inside. The blade starts at $1,900, and both of these were talking about the base configuration, the GTX 1060, or Max-Q version in the case of the blade, 16 gigs of RAM, a 256 gig SSD inside. All right, so for that one, it's more for your traditional laptop users. You can get it with a touch screen if you go for the 4K option or a matte non-touch screen if you go for the full HD. There's no pen support here. Again, with Surface Book, that's the other thing you're paying for. If, you, if you're going for something that has a tablet, obviously it's going to have a pen as well. So for those of you who want to do note-taking on the go, if you're artists, the kind of folks who do markup on the screen of any kind and you'd like to have a pen, obviously it's going to be the Surface Book. For those of you who just really want a traditional laptop, you can spend less money and you can get a razor blade, still granted an expensive item, but there you have it. The Surface Book 2 has a very capable GPU, in fact, a remarkably capable NVIDIA GTX 1060 for something that can be used as a convertible. But the catch there is, yes, it has an Intel 8th generation CPU, but it's still the 15-watt Ultrabook quad-core CPU, so it's a lot less performant than the new 6-core 45-watt CPU that's in the Razer Blade 15. Granted, Microsoft overwatts it for very short periods of time. It can go over using the usual 15 watts and hit like 25 watts, so you can get more performance out of it than the average Ultrabook using that CPU, but they're still very different in class in terms of performance. So while the Surface Book 2 15-inch holds up well against last year's quad-core 45-watt laptops, say like the Dell XPS 15, now that we're up to the six cores this year, and just recently released in the last couple of months, the performance gap has widened yet again. Now, if you're mostly just looking at gaming, which probably you're not if you're buying a Surface Book 2, to be honest, it's not primarily a gaming laptop, but if you're, if you're talking about gaming, the GPU is the most important thing. Still, you are going to get higher frame rates even when gaming when you have a more powerful CPU, particularly for open world games, say like Far Cry 5 or something like that. Next, there are things that are CPU dependent. Video encoding and decoding particularly often use the CPU. So the Razer Blade is going to be a lot faster for you video editors out there who are looking for faster export times in Premiere. With Photoshop, uh, it gets closer. You'll see the CPU get hotter on the Surface Book 2 15-inch. Now I say this as an owner who's been pushing it probably beyond its limits since it came out even using you know, advanced filters in Photoshop and that sort of thing, whereas something like the Blade 15 will barely break a sweat doing the same thing. Then there's ZBrush, which is pretty much using the CPU more so than the GPU for doing what it does. The stronger the CPU you have, the better. 
Now back to the GPU again. So the Surface has the full GTX 1060, not a Max Q variant, which is admirable. Uh, they use PCI X4 instead of PCI X16. The card itself is X16, but it's connected via X4. So it's a little bit bottlenecked by that, but it still does well and certainly should perform as well as the Max Q1060. We have the Max Q1070 option in our Razer Blade. That one offers 20, 25% more performance in games. So that one, if you're really into games, is probably the one that you want to shoot for and will leave the Surface Book 2 in the dust. Well, if you're playing first person shooter games, again, like Far Cry 5, something like that, if you're playing online multiplayer games that are less demanding of the GPUs, say Overwatch or Fortnite or PUBG, then the 1060 or 1060 Max-Q actually is fine. One of the big failings for Surface Book 2 is the fact it still didn't have Thunderbolt 3. It does have one USB-C port, but no Thunderbolt 3 because Microsoft was married to their dock connector, which honestly is already out of date. By the time the Surface Book 2 came out, it doesn't even provide enough power to charge the Surface Book 2 15 inch under very, very heavy load. Now, normal heavy load, it's okay, so I don't worry about it too much, but it outputs 90 watts. The included charger with the Surface Book 2 is 100 watts, so yeah, there you go. So the Surface Dock itself, here it is, the bane of my existence sometimes. This thing is several years old. They haven't come out with a new one. Everybody keeps thinking and hoping that they just might. This is sort of like waiting for Apple to refresh a MacBook Pro at this point. God knows if and when it's going to happen. Stop just hoping for it and live in the present, you know? So it has a decent number of ports. You've got Ethernet on here. You've got your audio. You've got several USB 3.0 ports. You've got two display ports, though driving two 4K monitors at 60 hertz can be a challenge with this. Not everybody lives in that rarefied, wonderful environment where they own such things and need to do it. It, it tends to disconnect once in a while, generally be a little flaky every so often, so it can be quite annoying. On the upside, it's 200 bucks, but you can often find it on sale for 129 someplace, maybe even 99 bucks. It's really small, it's high quality, and it has a handy little magnetic connector, so those parts are nice. I personally want Thunderbolt 3, though, because there are a wide choice of docks available now, which give you even better and, generally speaking, more reliable connectivity. For example, the Dell Thunderbolt 3 dock, my god, this has more ports than I can count on my, all of my fingers. I have to start throwing in toes. You've got your display port, you've got your HDMI, you've got your Ethernet, you've got everything on board here. It has its own little power supply, its own little fan to keep things going chill. It works pretty well. Then there's the Razer Core for external GPUs and other brands of external GPUs that use Thunderbolt 3 at this point, too. So if you want to keep your rig going longer with today's games or tomorrow's games when your GPU that's built-in starts to become less adequate for the task, that's an option too for your Razer Blade 15 and anything with a Thunderbolt 3 port, but not with the Surface Book 2. Keyboards here, the, I would say the Surface Book 2 wins for most people. Now, keyboards have become a matter of personal preference, and some of you are more okay with very low travel keyboards than others of you. I prefer more travel when possible. The Surface Book 2 has a normal amount of travel. It's a very nice, very tactile, white backlit keyboard. The Razer Blade has the neat perky RGB chroma backlit keyboard, so you can go to town color coding it and having it do light shows and whatever you want. So, that's nifty for you gaming-oriented people who like that sort of thing. Or you can just have it chill and set it to white or whatever single color that you want as well. But the key travel is extremely short on it. Not MacBook Pro weird short, you know, but it's about 1.3 millimeters, 1.2 millimeters of travel. It's not very tactile. And then there's the weirdo right shift key situation with it. The right shift key isn't as wide as normal. And they've stuck a little up arrow key next to it. So you tend to hit the up arrow key instead of the shift key. If you watch my review of the Razer Blade 15, you know I found a pretty simple solution, which is to remap the up arrow to be the shift key using Razer Synapse. Since it's a fully programmable keyboard, you can do that. But still, I would prefer the Surface Book 2 keyboard, certainly. When it comes to trackpad, Surface Book 2 has a really good trackpad. I mean, clearly they were just studying Apple's mojo there to try to get as good a trackpad as they could get, and it is an excellent trackpad. Now, the Razer Blades is actually very good, too. It's a Microsoft Precision trackpad. It's pretty darn huge, maybe bigger than it needs to be. That seems to be the trend in the past year to have really huge trackpads. I don't know why. Anyway, it's also a very good trackpad. Maybe not quite up to Surface Book 2's level, but it's close enough to I never think, oh, I wish I had Surface Book 2 trackpad here. Display. Well, we're talking different kinds of lovely here, really. We have two choices with the Razer Blade. You have one lovely choice with the Surface Book 2 15-inch. It's almost 4K, the Surface Book 2 15-inch. Slightly different because it has that 3 by 2 aspect ratio, which a lot of people really love. And it is great, particularly for 
content consumption when that content is the written word, web pages, word documents, because you have more height, so less scrolling going on. That is very nice. Also, if you're a photographer and you're working with the typical three by two aspect ratio photos, you, this is the most common setting for most di digital SLRs, oh, that works out perfectly well when you're doing Photoshop. Where it's not so great is for consuming video, which is typically widescreen 1920 by 1080 because you have black bars up on the top and the bottom and there are games that actually don't support three by two aspect ratio so there's that now the surface book 2 has a full srgb gamut display with very high contrast ratio so in that respect contrast ratio it certainly wins the color gamut is not better than the razor blade 1080p and it's less than the 4k razor blade now, the 1080p razor blade display is matte and non-touch. The 4K is touch and it's glossy. So you get full sRGB on the 1080p option and you get almost full Adobe RGB, a much wider color gamut, on the 4K display. So that would be nice for you content creators out there. The Surface Book 2 display, I still I have to say, I really I enjoy it a lot. The only thing is, it is a glare monster. It's a good thing that it's very bright. It's about 100 nits brighter than the full HD display on the razor blade. 400 nits versus 300 nits, but it is a bonded glass. Everything that Microsoft says they did, it's still a mirror. That's the only drawback with that one. When it comes to speakers, here's something that I don't think any of us would expect, but the Razer Blade has adequate speakers. There's not really much bass there. The same is true of its brethren, the MSI GS65, the Aero 15X, and the Surface Book 2 has really good sounding speakers, despite the fact that they're in the tablet section, the, the place where there's a whole, not a whole lot of room going on there. They sound good. They're a little more full, a little more spatial separation, a little bit more bass there. So attention that. Go figure. When it comes to heat and noise, well, this is where Surface Book 2 15-inch is still a brilliant product because the graphics card, the GPU, is in the base. Just that and the battery, that's all there is there. All the rest of the brains are in the tablet section, which is why you can detach the tablet and take it away. It'll just run on integrated graphics when you're using it in tablet mode. This is brilliant because GPUs create a lot of heat. When you put them together with the CPU that also makes a lot of heat, your RAM, your SSD, that's why you have a lot of thin and light gaming laptops like the Razer Blade 15 that run pretty darn hot because it's all stuffed in one little small place. So Surface Book 2 doesn't have that problem. And if you're using it for everyday productivity work or streaming video where it's not even going to be using dedicated graphics, the base will not even get warm. I mean, it's a little chilling, literally speaking, you know, in a cold room because that GPU isn't doing anything down there at all. So that's kind of nice. Whereas a razor blade is always going to be warm. The least it will be is warm. If you're just doing productivity work, warm. Not hot, not burning, and probably won't make you sweat, but warm. The palm rest will also get warm, particularly on the left side, because that's where the SSD is located. A little unusual to have a warm palm rest, but it is with the razor. I think because the whole case is transferring heat there. What that means for the longevity of the battery, I don't know, you know, if you're using it for pro apps work, it's probably going to be fine for years. If you're playing Far Cry 5 for hours and hours on end and then some Assassin's Creed, that battery might start to swell a couple of years down the road. So the Surface Book 2, he has to happen somewhere eventually, right? Well, the back of it, because that's where the brains are, the tablet. However, when you're using it in laptop mode, you never touch there, so you wouldn't even probably realize it. If you are detaching it and using it as a tablet, it can get hot against your fingers, though, even doing Photoshop, which is probably one of the reasons a lot of us would detach it, because that can make it work some. If you're taking notes, it'll only be warm back there. Now, internal temperatures are another story. Surface Book 2 15 inch, especially for the fact that they let it run over wattage for short bursts of time, this course can get pretty darn hot. And I am guilty of pushing it too hard, honestly, myself, because I'll do things like run Photoshop and Lightroom and maybe even Premiere at once or some Dreamweaver or a little bit of ZBrush. And if you're doing all those things at once, you can see the CPU core temperatures get high. Even running Edge with a couple of tabs, with a couple of web pages that have too many ads that are just misbehaving a but particularly I've noticed that when it's plugged in, because laptops always run at a higher clock speed and more strongly when they're plugged in, the CPU cores will sometimes get close to 100 degrees, which is a little bit shocking and not a great thing. It, it certainly doesn't thermal throttle a lot. All right, more often, happily, it goes into the mid 80s. So that's gaming laptop territory, and that's not even with it pushing the GPU on it. So yeah, they still have a lot of performance packed in a very tiny space with that Surface Book.
The razor blade, you can watch our review to hear all about the thermals and stuff. Typically speaking, the core temperatures are around 48 to 50 degrees, whether it's plugged in or unplugged if you're doing light work. Even if I'm using Photoshop and I'm working with, say, eight raw files or so from a 24 megapixel camera, it's not really going to go beyond the 60s for core temperatures, which is really excellent. Now, gaming, you can get it into the mid to upper 80s, certainly, but I have yet to see something like Microsoft Edge with those mischievous tabs running get it anywhere near that hot. When it comes to battery life, Surface Book 2 15-inch is the clear winner. It's the famous Energizer Bunny for something in this segment that's pretty powerful. Well, it has a 15-watt CPU, sure, not so, so powerful there, but overall, the battery life on it is really impressive. Not playing games, just doing, again, your average productivity work, streaming video, brightness set at 150 nits. It's not hard to get 9 to 10 hours out of it. It's a dream if you travel a lot. If you're on airplanes and you just want to do that sort of lightweight stuff when you're on the plane, yeah. Now the razor blade is pretty good too. Now we have the GTX 1070 Max Q version, so it is the more powerful model, but we have the full HD display. The 4K will probably get lower battery life. That's how it usually runs. The higher the resolution, the lower the battery life for the panel. Anyway, it does about seven, eight hours, which is still extremely respectable for this class, but not as good as Surface Book 2. Now the difference in performance levels potentially is kind of illustrated simply by the chargers alone. This is the Surface Book 2 15 inch charger. This is a 100 watt charger. This is the Razer Blade 15 charger. It's 230 watts. Now if you get the GTX 1060 rather than the 1070, you'll get a 200 watt charger, which is physically pretty close to the same size. So in terms of what you're carrying around, the amount of weight, obviously the Surface Book 2 is going to be more portable. It also has a little USB port on if you want to charge your phone or something like that. So yeah, the razor blade can potentially consume more power. It has a much more power hungry CPU inside and a faster GPU if you go with the 1070 Max-Q option there. When it comes to charging the laptop, this is a little bit overkill because razor blade figures you might want to overclock your GTX 1070. They can get away with 180 watts and a slightly smaller charger even, but they don't. Microsoft Surface Book 2, you know the, the story now, everybody knows it, is that the 100 watts is just barely adequate and not adequate if you're really pushing it hard. Now, I mean like, really, like playing, again, Far Cry 5 or whatever your high-end game of choice is, and maybe even having something running in the background while the power setting in the taskbar is set to high performance mode. So it's not that easy to get a drain while gaming, but it is possible. Again, this goes back to Surface Book 2 connector already being inadequate and out of date for what they've created, this powerhouse with the Surface Book 15. That said, other than you crazy, crazy, cray, cray people out there who are going to be pushing this, doing Assassin's Creed on your Surface Book 2 15-inch for a long time, hours at a time, for most people, I don't think you're ever going to run into a, a situation where your Surface Book is going to discharge while it's plugged in. So it's not the end of the world either. Another important point is that Surface Book 2 is a sealed unit. You can't open it up to upgrade it. The screen is essentially glued to the casing. So if you want to upgrade it later, you realize you need more RAM, a bigger SSD, no can do. You just have to, well, <laughs> sell it and buy another one. Razor Blade, you can open it up. You can replace the SSD with a larger one if you wish. Obviously, you can also access and service the battery, and it has two RAM slots. So Surface Book 2 is available with up to 16 gigs of RAM soldered on board. Not upgradable, not that you could get inside anyway. And, well, the Razor Blade goes up to 32 gigs of RAM. So for those of you who are heavy on the RAM, say you're running several virtual machines doing 4K video editing and you'd like to have more than 16 gigs, the Razer Blade would be the better choice there. Both of them have PCIe NVMe fast SSDs. Lastly, there's support. This isn't something we always talk about, but in this case it's relevant because Razer Blade had a pretty poor reputation when it came to support. Happily, they have really turned that around, and now if you call up and you want to return the laptop or something like that or get a swap, they don't give you a hard time. They do it quickly and efficiently, so that's refreshing now. Things have improved there. I, I think they heard all the complaints, and they realized they couldn't keep sending high-end boutique products without treating their customers right. Still, they're primarily an online company. You can go buy it, or you will be able to buy it soon, at Best Buy and at Microsoft Store, either their website or their physical store. So, yeah you're going to have some other options for customer service in the initial purchasing phase anyway in your 30-day happiness period before you have to return it if you don't like it, that sort of thing. But the, the, they're still primarily an online company, which means six months down the road, if something does go wrong with it, you will have to deal with them. 
So you can't just walk into a store and swap it out is what I'm saying. Which, of course, if you bought an HP Spectre X360, you probably couldn't do either. Okay, so... Right. But Microsoft has the advantage here because they have a lot of Microsoft stores, at least around the United States now, and they've modeled them after Apple stores, which means chipper, happy, friendly people who act like the customer is always right. So if you buy particularly a Microsoft branded product like the, the Surface Book 2, and you have a problem with it that looks like a pretty serious problem, they'll probably just swap in the store for a new one right there. So no waiting, no shipping it in, no being without a laptop for a while. You get the idea. You get more mollycoddled by Microsoft if you have access to a Microsoft physical store. Now, if you don't have access to a, a physical Microsoft store near you and you're dealing with their phone and chat support and all that sort of thing, it's the usual, not really very satisfying experience that you experience with, uh, sadly, most computer tech support. So yeah, it only really holds true if you have a store nearby. So there you have it, Microsoft Surface Book 2 15 inch versus the Razer Blade 15, the king and the king of the first world boutique lovely 15 inch laptops with enough chops to do some gaming. Obviously the Blade is more oriented towards gaming in terms of the physical design of it and the, the graphics inside and the processor and all that sort of thing, but the Surface Book 2 can do a lot of that. But in the end, the Surface Book 2 is still geared towards the mobile professional using pro apps a bit more. It's the must-have device if you have the money and you want to do art, if you want to use the pen, if you want to do note-taking with a detachable clipboard, it's still unique in that respect, that you can have a relatively lightweight big screen clipboard and a pen. Whoa, it's sweet, it's nice. But if you don't intend to use those things, there's just not really much of a reason to be paying the $600 extra money for them either. You might as well go for the Blade 15 or whatever 15-inch laptop floats your boat and does the things that you need. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool smackdowns. And thumbs up if you like this vid.